upon you, though you have not yet understood the shame. If you are fed with God's knowledge, if you are fed with God's understanding, then the new man in you will prosper. What kills the new man in you, whenever the new man is not fed,
glorify your name oh god in this place in our lives we glorify your name just go ahead and worship the lord and glorify his holy name and even you're watching us wherever you are just go ahead and glorify the name of the living god father we glorify your name because you are the alpha and omega we glorify your name oh god because of your power because of your wisdom lord we glorify your name yes just go ahead and glorify his name just go ahead and glorify his name he's the king of kings He's the Lord of Lords. You are welcome in this place. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit of God. You are welcome, Lord. You are welcome, Lord Jesus. You are welcome, Holy Spirit of God. We glorify your name. Rebo Santa Cate, Brodo, Santa Bata. Ilebo Sete, Brodo. to welcome all of you whoever is watching us wherever you're watching us from you are welcome in the presence of God in Jesus name and everyone in this place you're welcome in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ let's put together our hands as we welcome God the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit of God in our menace yes you are welcome oh God every hand praise is yours you're welcome, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit of God. Angels of God, come and minister with me. And also unto the lovely people of God that are in the presence of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Have good afternoon. Is it morning? Is it afternoon? Morning. It's still morning. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Pastor. Yes, how are you doing? Yeah, okay. Yes, I know it is very, very cold, but to God be the glory, we thank God for the weather, we thank God for everything. Yes, you may be seated in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to continue to learn how we can get better in life, especially at such a time as this, when we are hearing reports from the world that are negative, and showing that things are not good but i want you to understand this that there is that other side of god that is telling us that things are okay in jesus mighty name everyone lift up those hands and repeat these words and say lord jesus speak aloud say lord jesus here i am in your presence bless me touch my life in jesus name Yes, we are learning how we can get better in life, how we can become successful, how we can develop ourselves and reach that level of glory where God wants our lives to be. That is why we are learning how to receive more of God's wisdom and what wisdom does. And also we are learning how to fight against foolishness. You know, many times when it comes to that word, foolish or foolishness, most people use it as an abuse. But yet, it is a deep thing that the evil one uses. It is a weapon that the evil one uses to disorganize the lives of people, to blind people's eyes, not to see ahead, to make sure that people's lives are destroyed. Foolishness is a bad spirit. And as a believer, you shouldn't get into a state of being foolish what we've seen in the previous service that when you are wise there is a difference that is seen in your life and also when you are foolish there is a difference that is seen in your life so we continue we begin from the book of proverbs chapter 28 verses 26 we're gonna use english standard version one of the things that we've seen that foolishness does, foolishness blinds people. 
Foolishness does not allow people to move or to be in the will of God. That is what we saw in the previous service. Yet, what we become, what we do, we do it in line of the will of God. When God looked at Joshua, he realized that Joshua has a promised land that is ahead. Already he has promised the children of Israel their promised land. But one of the things that made the children of Israel to fail to reach their promised land, they went outside of the will of God and the spirit of foolishness got a hold of them. It couldn't allow them to see farther. The, fully, the spirit of foolishness, as we've been seeing even in the previous services, what the devil does when he hides in foolishness, he never allows you to see ahead. He will show you the present and your past, and you may think that probably your present and the past, that is what your life is meant to be. And he will make sure that you miss out what is ahead of your life. Wisdom connects us to our future. Wisdom makes our lives to center in the will of God. So what God did unto Joshua, he comes unto Joshua in Joshua chapter 1 verses 8. He tells him to meditate. In other words, to concentrate on the word day and night. And then through the word, that is where the way that is prosperous and the way that brings good success was. And that is what foolishness fights against. Many people who are controlled by the spirit of foolishness. What the spirit of foolishness does is to come to take you to wrong roads, to wrong ways, so that you are not prosperous in your ways and you don't see good success in your life. We've seen in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verses 2, the Bible saying that the wise, what do the wise do? They choose the right road and the fools take a wrong one. So the devil knows it very well that when you become more foolish, you'll be going in wrong paths and you'll keep on doing wrong things. You'll keep on doing mistakes and your life will be destroyed. So child of God, what brings foolishness in people's lives? What causes people to be foolish? One of the things that causes people to be foolish, we're going to look at it in the book of Proverbs, where we ended in the previous service. Proverbs 28 verses 26. English Standard Version says, Whoever trusts in his own mind is a fool. Now, why your own mind? Your own mind, that is your, the way you see things as you. Your insight as a person. Many times because man falls or fell from the glory of God, our own minds are corrupted by the systems of this world. Our own minds result into our personal insight, the way we look at things. Many times when you lack the wisdom of God in your life, the way you look at things is based on the way how you think as a person. So the Bible is saying that whoever trusts in his own mind is a fool. That means your own mind, that is where you get your own understanding and your own understanding is based on the knowledge of what you know based on the things of this world. That means that your own mind, when you trust in your own mind, you're trusting in your own self. Your own self is limited. But when you allow the wisdom of God to come into your life and walk in godly wisdom, wisdom will deliver you from the schemes of foolishness that the devil brings unto people's lives that hold the people to become captive, that hold the people into the principles of this world which are already corrupted by the evil one. This is when, when you trust in your own understanding, which is your own mind, when you trust in your own mind, trusting in yourself, you begin to get worse in the life of salvation. The life of salvation you and I received is a life where we are led by the Spirit of God. And remember, this Spirit of God manifests itself in godly wisdom and to our lives. When we are led by the Spirit of God, we never go into error. But when we are not led by the Spirit of God, we begin to be led by what we think. 
and then we are going to see through our own insight what seemed to be good thinking it is good yet it is not good leading unto our lives and to destruction and that is how foolishness gets into people's lives people begin to be worse and what foolishness does as people begin to be worse as we've seen in second peter chapter 2 verses 14 people what happens is they begin to commit adultery with their eyes which is this adultery that they are talking about people begin to desire for sin and they are never satisfied so child of god god does not want your life to begin to move in such a direction remember that this year is a good year as the lord has promised us in this church it's a year where we are going to receive good things it's a year where divine doors are going to open up for us that is why you see god has also promised us this year wisdom knowledge and understanding and it is wisdom knowledge and understanding that will take us to the good things that we must be receiving in our lives as divine doors continue to open up in our lives so to many people who lack the wisdom of god and get into foolishness their lives in salvation get worse and worse and worse remember that salvation is meant to bring out that perfect image that you are created in in god and then now when you get into foolishness because now everything you're basing it you're trusting in your own understanding you're not being guided by wisdom you're not being led by the spirit of wisdom what is going to be next is you falling because that is what the devil is after god tells us in the book of isaiah to arise and shine god expects us to be shining so that our light can be seen that is what the devil never wants the devil never wants you to be a believer who is standing right many people today have fallen though they call themselves believers but they have fallen in salvation and the bible says as you fall because of foolishness foolishness never allows you to take the right road you are ever doing wrong things that is why you see today in church it is a common saying people saying i have done everything my life is not getting better my life is not doing well why people are busy taking wrong roads people are taking wrong paths in life they are doing wrong things same and again no wonder they are not receiving right results in their lives so when you fall because of foolishness when you're blinded and made a captive in your life because of foolishness peter says second peter chapter 2 verses 20 remember where we are in verses 14 the bible is saying that you desire now to sin or your life now is moving in sin time and again moreover never satisfied of whatever you're doing what is sin we've seen before but sin is anything against the will of god in your life and that is what foolishness does foolishness comes in to drive you out from the will of god because whenever your life is in the will of god you are gonna move in prosperous ways and you're gonna have good success but when foolishness comes in foolishness fights against the godly development and godly success of your life you begin to do things you're not supposed to be doing remember what you've seen in the previous service that as foolishness comes in foolishness brings self ambition and through self ambition you receive selfishness the spirit of selfishness of pride of envy and all of this come for your downfall for you never to move in the will of god so now when you are a fallen person now you are trained in greed and now you begin to live under god's curse that is what second peter is saying chapter 2 verses 14 this is when many times you find believers struggling in issues they're not supposed to be struggling in because they don't have the understanding they don't have the wisdom they don't have the knowledge of how to get out of challenges and situations and circumstances that have risen over their lives so their lives begin to be they get worse and worse in salvation so the same book where we are in peter chapter 2 verses 20 and we're going to read it from nlt version what does the bible say remember that the people that peter is talking about are people who are saved 
The people that Peter is talking about are people who are in God. The Bible says, and when these people, when they, the people escape from the wickedness of the world by knowing our Lord Jesus Christ, they get entangled up again and enslaved by sin again. They are worse than before. And that is the working of the enemy. The enemy wants to show most of the people that salvation does not have power. The enemy wants to show a lot of people that salvation can't make you better than how you were before you got saved. Now because most people don't have the wisdom of God and they're not moving in wisdom because wisdom delivers. That, that is what we've seen in the previous service that when you walk in wisdom, you are delivered in Proverbs 28, 26. Because people don't have that wisdom to deliver them, now they are entangled again, as Peter is saying, and they become worse than before. God has never called you to be worse. That is why you see, as a child of God, fight as much as you can. Fight foolishness out of your life. It is a spirit that never wants you to prosper that never wants you to succeed so the bible is saying because people don't have now the wisdom of god they that got saved they that were taken out of the world of the wickedness of the world by knowing the lord jesus christ they get entangled up again and is left by sin and they become worse than before and verses 21 scripture reads and says in verses 21 of NLT version where we are it would be better if they had not known the way of righteousness than to know it and then reject the command that was given to live a, to live a holy life one of the things that foolishness does foolishness because it fights against people being in the will of God foolishness takes people into unrighteousness so when you are in and when you live a life that is not righteous before god this is when you begin to sin time and again and as you're sinning you're becoming worse and worse and worse and to many people that is why you see self-reflection is very very important the more you have self-reflection in your life the more you discover where errors are is the more even the wisdom of God comes because you're applying now in self-reflection a principle of quietness where we receive the wisdom of God that can come and deliver us. Child of God, this is what I want you to understand. Salvation is not just a mere thing that you receive. It is not something casual. It is a life we live which is meant to be a life of righteousness, which is meant to be a holy life, which is meant to be a life that makes you better. So what must you do? You must time and again be in the word of God, which is very, very important. When God realized that the children of Israel can't make it to the promised land they are gonna fail because foolishness came into them ever showing them the present and the past wanting to go back to Egypt he comes where Joshua is he says hey you Joshua you are the person who's leading these people what you must do don't look to the left don't look to the right stay on the word concentrate on the word and child of God that is what I also want you to understand that the more you concentrate on the word of God in your life and begin to speak it and make it a confession and begin to look at it the way it is it is going to be a way that is going to prosper your life it's going to be one of the things that is going to bring the will of God or to make your life ever to stay in the will of God so when Joshua remains and concentrated on the word he followed the will of God he entered the promised land every one of us we have a promised land so what foolishness is fighting foolishness is fighting that land foolishness is fighting against your life to enter that level where it must be in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ so refuse as a person to be entangled again by the world refuse to be entangled by what the devil is offering many times because people don't know that foolishness is a spirit that comes from the evil one they don't know that through foolishness the devil is ever trying to show you that he can offer you something better 
by the world, through the world system. He's trying to show through foolishness that your life can live better when you look to the world, which is not right. That is why you see the Bible is saying by the eyes people commit adultery. So, child of God, what is that that you're seeing? If you are ever in the word of God, the word of God will bring a right direction in your life. So refuse to be entangled by the foolishness that the devil brings unto people's life. You can refuse foolishness. You can fight against foolishness. That is why in Galatians chapter 5 verses 1, the Bible reads in the book of Galatians chapter 5 verses 1, that stand stand fast therefore in the liberty by which christ has made us free wisdom will free you wisdom will free you for you not to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage there are very many things that come with foolishness that lead to bondages in people's lives but when you walk in the wisdom of god you can't be entangled by the world again as peter is talking about the people if you think that you're going to the world to be better the world is going to entangle you the world is going to put a yoke on your life and your life is going to be worse but if you want to get better freedom will deliver wisdom will deliver you and wisdom will bring development and success in your life when you fail to do what is right in life especially in the life of salvation you are going to find yourself living a life of compromising. And those are the ways that bring in foolishness in people's lives. When you fail to do what is right, and many people are failing to do that, people are blaming others in salvation. They are blaming their leaders. They are blaming their pastors. They are blaming other people. But child of God, let me tell you something salvation is personal you need to do you need to do right things in salvation to receive right results in salvation so when you fail to do what is right in your life of salvation you're gonna be a compromising believer and today compromising believers are many and when you begin to be a compromising believer you are gonna open up room for the devil to hide in foolishness to come and attack your life and through these attacks of the devil what the devil attacks he attacks the will of god in your life he attacks the will of god in your life that is what is fighting against through foolishness the devil attacks god's will in people's lives and now if you don't know what the will of god is for your life you are gonna hook up in the spirit of foolishness which is going to turn you to become ungodly many people who have become foolish in church are ungodly people you can't be a godly person and you're foolish ungodly people are the ones who become foolish so foolishness makes people to become ungodly and when you become ungodly you begin to follow the works of flesh and when you follow the works of flesh they turn your life into sinning they turn your life into wickedness and to some people they begin to mock others they begin to mock god they begin to mock things of god you become a scornful person in the book of psalms is where we are remember today what we are looking at when you are wise wisdom brings a difference also when you are foolish foolishness brings a difference so the choice is yours do you want to be wise so that a difference is seen when greater things are happening in your life or you choose a wrong way that foolish people take and then you become worse and also a difference will be seen from that person who's meant to be better to a person who's worse because the Bible has already shown us when you are wise as Ecclesiastes says chapter 10 verses 2 when you are wise you choose the right road but when you're foolish you choose the wrong road that means like it or not people who decide to do wrong things or people who begin to do wrong things in life they've chosen wrong roads in life because of the foolishness or the spirit of foolishness that has come into them 
So in Psalms is where we are. Psalms shows a difference between those who are wise, those who have received the wisdom of God, what it can do, and also people who have become foolish where they end up. When you receive godly wisdom in your life, wisdom will connect you to your future blessing and you'll be blessed, you'll be prosperous, you'll be better. When you choose to go wrong roads in life because you are not doing right things that you're supposed to be doing in salvation, foolishness is going to destroy you. Foolishness is going to destroy you. So, in the book of Psalms is where we are. Psalms chapter 1 verses 1. In the book of Psalms where we are, Psalms chapter 1 verses 1. Let us all read. What does scripture say in the book of Psalms? Psalms chapter 1 verses 1. What does scripture say? We read, yes. No, we can do better than that. Let's all read, yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Now, whatever you see that they are talking about here, ungodliness, standing in the path of sinners, being someone who's scos who, who, someone who is scorseful, the counsel of people who are not godly, all that comes as a result of people or of foolishness in people's lives. You become scornful. You become a sinner. You become ungodly. And the counsel that you move on is ungodly. So child of God, this is what I want you to understand. When you receive godly wisdom, you can't follow the advice of the wicked. Here, the counsel of the ungodly is the advice of the wicked. Today, there are very many people in church. You are easy. It is easy for you to follow the counsel of wickedness. No wonder in the book of Jeremiah, as we've seen before, Jeremiah chapter 4, verses 22, Scripture saying in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 4, verses 22, that for my people are foolish. They have not known me. They are silly children. They have no understanding. They are wise to do. They are wise to do evil. Can you imagine? The spirit of foolishness can push you to a level of being wise to do evil. And yet when it comes to good, you have no knowledge about doing something good. This is what the psalmist is trying to say. In the book of Psalms, what we are looking at, when you are blessed, that means you are wise. Wisdom makes us to be wise people. And wisdom can't allow you to move in the counsel of ungodly people. Wisdom can't allow you to stand in the path of sinners. Wisdom can't allow you to sit with the scornful people. But when you are foolish, all this befalls you. You are ungodly. You follow the counsel of ungodly people. You are ever in the path of sinners. You sit with scornful people. So child of God, God wants you to receive godly wisdom which can't allow your life to stand in the path of sinners nor for you to sit, or to sit with scornful people who mock others. God wants your life to be kept from all this because God, the godly wisdom that you get will keep your life far from such people. Search yourself today and see which kind of people are you with. Today people are, are with scornful people. People today are moving with people who mock others. And when things become so terrible in your life, you don't know it's because of the company that is around you. Do you know that we've already seen that when you have a company of foolish people around you, you're ever going to be in trouble? It is very, very important for you to live a holy life. That is why you see, you must also begin to see the kind of people around you. You are saved. What are you doing with unsaved people? 
you will call them friends you will say they help you in time of trouble but yet they are bringing trouble to you to many people they don't understand this you are ever with people who abuse people who are saved but they are your friend you are ever with people who ever go doing wrong things and this is the company that you are always in at the end of it all this is going to affect you you're going to find yourself seeking advice from them you're going to find yourself ever in the path of sinners you're going to find yourself also ever being with people who are scornful and they're going to affect your lifetime and again so wisdom keeps us or separates our lives from such people because what god does god wants to bless our lives he wants to bless your life your life must be better than how it was before your life must be better than though even those people that don't know god so wisdom keeps our lives from such people when our lives are separated from such people god blesses our lives more than even what these other people can't do in our lives you know many many people are so busy involving their lives in things that can develop them what are those things that you're involved in today involve yourself in things that will develop you involve yourself in things that will bring success in your life but there are things that people think that they are good in life though they seem to look good in their eyes yet they become hindrances in their lives that is where wisdom is very very important paul talks about people who seem to be so busy in church who seem to be so busy in salvation but they are busy in things that can't make them better and then this is what is happening in the world people are so busy in things that are not bringing development and success in their lives but rather they are bringing destruction in their lives in the book of Thessalonians chapter 2 verses chapter 3 verses 11 Paul calls such people busy bodies and whenever you become a busy body in God you begin to be a person who walks in a disorderly manner there are people today they claim that they are saved they claim that they know God but yet the way they walk they are just busy body causing disorder in church causing disorder in families causing disorder wherever they are so child of God this is what I want you to understand God does not want you to be a busy body thinking you're working so much doing things thinking that they'll bring development in your life yet they are the things that are hindering you so Paul talks about people being busy bodies but this is my prayer that you receive the wisdom of God for you never to be a busy body being someone who's disordered in manner we have those people there are so many in church in families in businesses everywhere you go there are very many people who are busy bodies what they do is to disorganize others what they do is to let others go off track to follow what they are doing and what they are doing is not right peter chapter 4 verses 15 he also talks about such people who are busy bodies these people are busy bodies these are people who are so busy about the matters of others they want to find out what is happening in other people's lives they are so busy to find out what that boyfriend is in another person's life what that girlfriend is what the man that man is doing what that woman is doing they are so much concerned and updated with other people's matters yet in their lives there is so much they must do which they are not concentrating on so child of God as first Peter chapter 4 verses 5 says that let none of you suffer let none of you suffer as a busybody in other people's matters there are certain things now that you must give up on stop concentrating so much on other people's matters that is going to make you to be so busy over somebody 
You want to know what kind of car which someone, someone is driving. You want to know how much someone is earning. You are so busy with other people's matters. That is why you put the effort. That is why you're putting your energy. Yet all that is foolishness. So child of God, time to fight foolishness is now. You can fight foolishness. You can resist foolishness. Are you busy? Are you busy with your matters? Or you're busy with matters that can develop you? So foolishness can entangle people and cause them to be so busy with things that will never take them anywhere. That is why you see it is time for wisdom. So as people become so busy, as we are seeing in the book of Psalms, this is when people now stand in passes of sinners. This is when people sit with scornful people. This is when people begin to take ungodly advice. So Psalms chapter 1 verse 3 says, Now watch this. Because now you are blessed by God. As we've seen in, in verses 1. God blesses you. And he separates you from people. Whom the spirit of foolishness is working upon. For you your life is separated. In verses 3 the Bible says. Because now you have the wisdom of God. You are planted by God. And you begin to bring forth fruit in its season. Wisdom makes us bear fruit. God wants you to have wisdom so that you can bear fruit. So people who are foolish, they can't bear fruit that can survive for the future. So when you are wise, wisdom will make you bear fruit in this season. And the Bible says, you don't wither you don't wither and whatever you do prospers that is what i love about the wisdom of god when we have this wisdom of god we begin to bear godly fruits in our lives and whatever we do prospers do you want to prosper in whatever you are doing wisdom is the key you need to have wisdom in life when you don't have wisdom you're gonna struggle with a lot of things people are doing businesses that are failing People have entered relationships that have failed. People have entered a lot of things in life and their lives are not progressing. Simply because when you lack the wisdom of God, you won't bear fruit. You won't have godliness in your life that will sustain you in what you're doing. So people who, are, who have become wise, God makes their lives fruitful by bearing fruit in every season. And as you bear fruit in every season, you never wither. This is when your life becomes prosperous in whatever you do. That means that wisdom connects us to our future blessing. Wisdom connects us to what God has laid ahead of our lives. Wisdom will show you that you have a brighter future. No wonder whatever you're doing is prospering. When you reach a level, when you're doing things that are prospering in your life, it shows that there is future in your life, which foolishness never does. Foolishness fights against what we are meant to be in the future. Foolishness wants to take people, or foolishness makes people to be stuck in their present lives and even in their past. That is why you see, to most foolish people, they are ever referring to the present and to the past. They have no hope for the future. Foolish people never see ahead. And that is what the spirit of foolishness does. It blinds people never to see ahead, never to think ahead. That is why you see a foolish person can come and look at you. You who is walking in the wisdom of God and begin to predict negative. Foolish people are ever seeing negative after negative. They predict negative. They speak negative. They see negative ahead of their lives. But when we become wise, with the wisdom of God opens up our eyes for us to see ahead, for us even to begin to, to, to believe God for better things ahead of our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Verses 4, the book of Psalms, describes... 
the foolish people, the ungodly people, as chaff that is blown by the wind. That is why you see, child of God, it is very, very important. Believe God for every foolish person to come out of your life in Jesus' name. Can I repeat that again? Believe God for every foolish person to come out of your life and for you never to be near, near foolish people because foolishness comes as a destroyer in people's lives to turn people into chef. In other words, to turn people into nothing. The devil wants to destroy or destroys people through foolishness by turning them into nothing. Yet when we receive the wisdom of God, the wisdom of God makes us better. So, in the book of Psalms where we are, Psalms chapter 1 verses 4, describes people who have become ungodly. Because that is what foolishness does. It turns you to become ungodly and it turns you into chaff that is blown by the wind. That means now, because you are chaff, you are nothing. You become rebellious. Most foolish people are rebellious. Wisdom makes us to be obedient, but foolishness brings rebellion in people's lives. Look at people who are rebellious. Most of them are foolish. You can't be wise and you're rebellious. One of the things that came into Lucifer when he was thrown from heaven and he became Satan, he became the devil, was rebellion. The day he became rebellious, the day he became rebellious, it revealed his foolishness. Because now, through foolishness, he began to compete with God. He wanted to compete with God, yet God has no rival. He has no competitor. Foolishness showed him that he can be like God. Foolishness turned him into nothing. And as I speak, he is nothing. So, child of God, there is a level where God wants your life to be. When you are turned to become a foolish person, foolishness turns people into rebellion or into rebellious people. And when you become rebellious, it is possible to be a child of God, but when you are rebellious. And when you become rebellious, the next level is going to be you thinking the world can make you better. You thinking that the world can even give you what God failed to give you when you are in salvation. The book of Isaiah says, chapter 30, and that is where most people are today. People have turned to become rebellious. They no longer do what God requires them to do. People have a hope. When I go, I will work in the world and the world will pay me better. When I go to the world, I will receive this. When I go to the world, I will become better. Let me tell you something. If it is a spirit of foolishness that has turned you to become rebellious, it is moving upon your life to make sure that your life is destroyed. It can't let you go until it has destroyed your life. Don't think it can make you better. So avoid to reach such a state. Foolishness driving you to a point of becoming a rebellious child of God. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 30 verses 1, Are you rebellious in your family? Are you rebellious in your marriage? Are you a rebellious minister? Are you rebellious at your place of work? Rebellion is never from God. Rebellion is from foolishness. Rebellion is from the devil. And when you become rebellious, this is the consequence. Remember what we've seen in the previous service. But when foolishness gets a hold of you, it, you begin to base everything on your own mind, on your own insight. The way you see things, the way you think things are right, you do them not knowing the consequences. Most people have entered foolish status in life not knowing the consequences of foolishness. They are so bad. Foolishness destroys. Foolishness brings shame. You will enter foolishness not knowing the consequences that foolishness can also turn you to become rebellious. So the Bible is saying where we are. The Bible is saying in the book of Isaiah, because now when you become ungodly, you think what is going to be next. 
you're going to rebel against what the will of God says in your life what the will of God is in your life so the Bible is saying in the book of Isaiah chapter 30 verses 1 war to the rebellious war to the rebellious children says the Lord who take counsel not of me now that means if it is not the counsel of God it is the counsel of the world you begin to take the counsel of people are not godly you go to people are not godly to help you out to make your life better which will never happen so the Bible is saying war to the rebellious children say yes the Lord who take counsel but not of me who devise plans but not of my spirit that they may add sin to sin now when foolishness has taken you to a level of rebellion for you you think after all there are many churches i can go to another church there are many pastors i can go to another pastor there are many places of work i can have work I, there are many businesses i can do many businesses it is war unto you don't think you're gonna find peace what has caused you to be rebellious is after your life to be destroyed what has caused you to be rebellious is after your life to become chef so the Bible is saying now you add sin to sin why sin to sin sin is anything that is done outside of God's will so now you begin to do things outside of God's will one thing after another this is when you begin to find mistake after mistake in your life this is when you begin to find trouble after trouble in your life that means now you have reached a level of what Ecclesiastes is saying but the foolish people take the wrong purse you begin to take the wrong purse as the righteous or as the wise people take the right path every day they get better for you find yourself now becoming worse time and again this is when you begin to hear people say whatever I do does not prosper whatever I touch does not prosper yet who is wise whatever he does prospers so verses 2 of the book of Isaiah chapter 30 where we are scripture says now because you're rebellious you're adding sin to sin you walk down to Egypt and you have not asked my counsel these are people who can go to the world thinking that the world can do them better you go do something in the world thinking for today I will develop for today I will get money for today I will get better yet you're entangled now you are entangled by the spirit of foolishness and the Bible says you put your strength in Pharaoh this is when you begin to trust in your own self I know what I'm doing yet what you're doing is wrong Pharaoh can't be a blessing to you Pharaoh is a destroyer he will hold you for 430 years and moreover he won't let you go and the Bible says and you begin even to trust in the shadow of Egypt that means even what seems to be like from the world though you've not yet received it for you are trusting in it child of God listen to this the world is already corrupted by the evil one first John 5 19 says that it is the evil one who is controlling this world now don't think you can run to the devil and he can make you better he will just show you shadows of things he will show you a shadow of a marriage he will show you a shadow of a man he will show you a shadow of a wife he will show you a shadow of a husband he will show you a shadow he will not give you he will just show you a shadow to excite you for you to think that is gonna help you then verse 3 the Bible says therefore the strength of Pharaoh shall be your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt shall be your humiliation this is when people begin to realize that it was a mistake for them to step out from the will of God but already they are entangled in the world they are in the midst of problems they are in midst of trouble 
Is your life in problems? Is your life in trouble? Is your life entangled with a lot of things that the world has brought around you? Wisdom can deliver you. Believe God for today. You can arise and shine again. You can come out from that status. You can come out from that from that from that status of foolishness child of God God has never designed you to be like that he wants you to be better all he wants you to understand is one thing you take the path of foolishness you're gonna be destroyed you take the path of wisdom there is a brighter future for you there is prosperity for you there is success for you there is development for you but if you decide to trust in your own understanding. As the Bible has said for you to turn to become a fool. It will reach a time the strength of Pharaoh shall become your shame. And what you trusted in as a shadow of Egypt shall become your humiliation. And then verses 5 and at such times as this upon the church because there are greater things that we must be doing that must bring glory to his name and the devil knows it that is why as we are saying the devil is hiding so much or hides so much in foolishness for people not to operate in the wisdom of God so that they can look to the world they can look to Pharaoh but yet Pharaoh can become a shame unto your life 
Pharaoh can become humiliation in your life which God can be in our lives God has never been shamed to us God has never humiliated us every time and again he makes us better but the world can make you better child of God listen to me as I was saying in Isaiah chapter 30 verses 5 as I'm closing NIV version the Bible says everyone will be put to shame who is that person when you allow foolishness to come into your life and you think that foolishness will help you the world will help you people will help you it won't happen it won't happen the Bible says that everyone will be put to shame because of a people useless to them so child of God listen to me if there are people who are useless in your life believe God for such people to live believe God for such people to live why should you receive shame because of useless people in your life why should you receive that shame so the Bible is saying everyone will be put to shame because of people useless to them who bring who bring neither help or advantage but only shame and disgrace so this is what I want you to understand. These are not days of shame. These are days to rise and shine. If there are people who can't help you or who can't be an advantage to your life, you don't need such people. Such people are fools. Fools never add anything to us. They are not a advantage to us. They are disadvantage to us. Fools never help us. Fools fight against what we are and what we are doing. I stand by the power of the Holy Spirit right now. Whosoever is in this place and even you are watching me. If there are fools around you. I chase those people off your life in Jesus name. So what does that mean? You are about to be a person who never sees shame or disgrace again. Because foolishness will never have power over you in Jesus mighty name. Foolish people. They bring disgrace. They bring shame. But I'm here to say God is about to add wise people unto your life. God is about to add people who are going to be advantageous to your life. God is about to add people to your life who are going to make you better. And I declare this in Jesus name. Whosoever brought shame, whosoever brought disgrace around your life I chase that person out of your life in Jesus name. May the wisdom of God surround you. May the power of God surround you. This is your season to arise and shine in Jesus name. And for sure you shall arise and shine. If you believe it, shout and say spirit of wisdom come upon my life right now. God say spirit of wisdom come upon my life right now. Say spirit of wisdom come upon my life right now. God Everyone says, Spirit of wisdom, come upon my life right now. Spirit of wisdom, come upon my life right now. Yes, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We welcome the spirit of wisdom upon us. We refuse to be fools, oh God. We refuse to be blinded by foolishness in Jesus' name. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Everybody, everybody, call the spirit of wisdom to come upon your life in Jesus' name. Call the spirit of wisdom to come upon your life right now in Jesus' mighty name. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Ripo sete keto brada. Hiela popo po se. Father, release wisdom right now. Release wisdom right now. Release wisdom right now. Release wisdom right now. Call, 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 call. Call the spirit of wisdom. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. It is happening right now. It is happening right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I give you praise, oh God. I glorify your name. There is 
we stand like you Lord at such a time as this yes you are a family you're watching me right now the spirit of wisdom has just descended right now and listen 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 to the wisdom of God you are a family there are people, there are three who wanted to take your family into a deal of land. And that land, they are telling you it's a land of, it's a farming land. You wanted to acquire the land where you can do farming as a family. But listen to me, those three people are thieves. They just want to steal your money. That money they've told you is too much. And when you give them that money, you'll never see them again. Don't involve yourself with those three people. Those are fools who have come to steal what you have don't involve yourself in them the word of wisdom has just come just quit that deal you wait on you wait yes God knows that you need that farm he knows that you need farm he's gonna bring one person who has the right place for you to have that farm and you will have it in Jesus mighty name you foolishness go 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 of people go of families in the name of Jesus everyone lift up those hands and say spirit of wisdom Come upon my life right now. Hey, gentlemen, come here, come here. Come here, come here quickly. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I give you praise. I glorify your name. There are people who are coming. Where's your mask? Open on your mask, please, quickly. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I give you praise, oh Lord. I glorify your holy name. Harriet, come here. He was set take a pronama set a kaya. Rielebobo set take a pronama sayaka. This is wisdom unto you. This is wisdom unto you. The word of the Lord is very clear. God is not a liar. God is not a liar. The world is about to see you turning into a great woman. What God promised you, that says the Lord, it is on the way coming. You watch and see. The world must know that there is a God in your life. The world must see your God. This is a word of wisdom. What the Lord is telling you, you just be quiet because people are asking you a lot of questions. They are saying what is happening around you. Don't tell them anything. This is a word of wisdom. Ha ha ha! Wisdom has come your way. They will see you. Oh my God. They will see you magnified. They will see you become what God promised you be. In Jesus name. Father thank you for what you've done from this woman. The world is going to see this. <laughs> Your family is going to see this. Your friends are going to see this. God is never a liar. And today he's confirming his word over your life. It will be so. <laughs> It will be so. It will be so. We glorify your name, my God. Hey, come here, come here. He has set up Rotosa Kataya. Somebody shout and say, Spirit of wisdom, come upon my life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, you will tell your family members not to get excited. Is a deal that is coming in the family this land where you have minerals tell your family not to be excited people are coming but they are coming and they want a lease from you guys the first group will come and the second the first one don't give them the, the lease and the second but the third give them give them because much is gonna happen through that in the name of Jesus father glorify your name Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come here, come here, lady. Come here. Thank you, Lord. Glorify your name. In the name of Jesus. Glorify your name. Rika tere de devo santa rabata bradado. Ake te prodovo saya. Father, thank you. What an eye has so just sin. What an ear has so just had. Rika te prodo santa kate pro. Hey, you two ladies, come quickly. Ribo, set, take him now. Quickly, quickly, come. Yes, oh Lord. Glorify your name. Everyone shout at the spirit of wisdom. Come upon my life. 
and in power in Jesus' mighty name. Let's give God the praise. Let's give God the praise. Let's give God the praise. We give you praise, oh God. We glorify your holy name. There is none like you in Jesus' name. Yes, it is time for us to give. Everyone get a hold of your tithes. Everyone get a hold of your offering in Jesus' name. We want to give our tithes. We're going to give our offerings in Jesus' name. We're going to plant our seeds. There is a number wherever you're watching us from that is running on the screen where you can plant your seeds, where you can plant your, where you can give your offerings, where you can give your tithes in Jesus' name. What is about tithes? When we give tithes, God rebukes the devourer and opens up the windows of heaven and releases a blessing upon our lives. And when we give our, our offerings unto the Lord, God gives us a blessing that is overflowing. He gives us a blessing that is overflowing. And when we plant our seeds, divine doors are open. So everyone get a hold of your tithes and begin to give tithes in Jesus' name. Father, rebuke every devourer out of people's lives in Jesus' name. And may God bless you. May the windows of heaven be opened over your lives. You can go on and give your tithes in Jesus' name. Father, bless your people as they give tithes. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, you can go on and give your offerings also. In the name of Jesus. Father, bless your people. As they are giving tithes and offerings in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you. As you give your offerings, as you give your tithes. In Jesus' mighty name. Ribete brodo sata katebrado. Ande bobo seke tebrodo 
Shaya, Ripete que te produza, Ripete que produza, Taka te produza. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Everyone, go ahead and plant your seeds. Go ahead and plant your seeds. In Jesus' name. Yes, you can go ahead and plant your seeds. Even you are watching us, you can give your tithes, you can give your offerings, you can plant your seeds. Yes, there is that number that is running of the ministry where you can put your tithes and offerings in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Everyone, get a hold of your change offering and begin to give your change offering. Probably asking yourself what this change offering is about. Whenever we come in the presence of God, we receive the revelation every Sunday. We give our change offering, believing God for change. That is why we give this change offering. So wherever you are, you can also give your change offering in Jesus' name. And the Lord will richly bless you in Jesus' name. Yes, Father, bless your people as they give their change offerings in the name of Jesus. Let there be change in their lives in Jesus' name. Yes, you can go ahead and give in Jesus' name. Name. We glorify your name, Lord, at such a time as this. Thank you, Lord. We glorify your name in the Father, as it began raining from morning and it's still raining may you rain down your blessings upon your people throughout this week and the coming weeks oh lord glorify yourself through your wisdom give every man and woman wisdom in this place and those who are watching us oh lord let the spirit of wisdom come upon you receive that spirit in the name of our lord jesus christ and may you operate in the wisdom of god from today Father God, thank you for who you are and what you're doing in Jesus' name. May the spirit of wisdom go with you and be upon you and cause you to do great and mighty things in life in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. God is God. Yes, God richly bless you and be with you and go with you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The grace. And the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit with us all. Hallelujah. Not fed. 